What's up YouTube, it's Terrence and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a fusion tutorial. For the past few weeks I've been browsing the DaVinci Resolve subreddit and I've been seeing where a lot of persons want to get into fusion but they just don't know where to start. Some are coming from After Effects and other layer based applications and some are just diving in for the first time. This video is going to help you with some of the basics and get you up and running where you'll be more comfortable using fusion. Since this video is targeted at someone who might be a complete beginner, I'm going to start by setting up the project. First we'll go down here and click on this cog icon which brings up the project settings. You can also reach this menu by hitting shift 9 on your keyboard. We're going to be leaving the settings as 1920 by 1080 but we're going to set the frame rates to 30 fps because this video is going to be mostly motion graphics. Since I'm keeping it simple, I'm not going to play with any of the other settings, just hit save. Over here in the media pool. I'm going to right click, hit timeline and create new timeline and since all the project settings are already set up, I'm just going to hit create and now we have a timeline right here. I'm going to head over to effects and I'm going to drag on a fusion composition. Now you won't see fusion composition under favorites here, but you can do a search for fusion, make sure you're under toolbox or effects and you can click this little star icon right here to make it a favorite. Now that you have a fusion composition, I'm going to click the fusion page right here. And here is the fusion interface. We have our toolbar with a few useful tools that can be customized. Up here we have the two viewer windows. Over on the right we have the inspector which is your properties panel. You can change the settings for specific nodes in here. And at the top you have metadata, keyframes and spline. This little icon right here allows you to collapse and expand the inspector area. If you've used layer based applications, nodes might seem a bit confusing at first, but it's pretty easy to understand. It's all about inputs and outputs. Let's put a few nodes on the page here so I can explain things a little bit better. Nodes are going to have one to four little points on them, or sometimes even more depending on the kind of node. You can mouse over the icon and you will get a tooltip that explains what that icon represents. So in Fusion, the gray boxes are outputs. The blue triangles are usually masks. On the merge node, the orange is the background and the green is the foreground. On this blur node right here, the orange is simply the input, blue is mask, and the square is the output. If you mouse over a node, you will notice that there are two or three little dots down here. You may only be seeing two, but I have three because I have some VR stuff on my computer. This tells us if the node is being shown in any of the viewers. If I drag this background to viewer 1, you can see the first dot lights up. If I drag it to viewer 2, then the second one lights up, showing that we're viewing this node on viewer 1 and viewer 2. You can also click a node and hit 1 or 2 on your keyboard to view it in a viewer. It also toggles it on and off. Let's briefly go over the properties. On the background node, I'm going to go ahead and make it green. Let's hit OK. We're going to put this in viewer 1. I'm going to pipe this into the merge node. Automatically it goes into the orange which is the background. Now for the text node, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type text and I'm going to merge this into the green. But we can't see anything and that is because we are viewing the background node. Let's go here, click on the merge. I'm going to hit 1 and 2 to put it on both viewers. Here we can see our text is now merged over the green background. Holding the shift key, I can drag the blur node and place it here over the text. So now the text is being affected by the blur and then being merged. I click the blur node and turn the blur up. You can see that it blurs out the text. What I'm going to do next is bring in another background node. I'm going to make it red. I'm also going to add an ellipse mask node and I'm going to plug this into the background. If I should put this on viewer 1, you can see that we have a red circle, which I can control by using the ellipse right here. I can now drag from the output of background 2 to the output of background 1. This automatically creates a merge node. Whichever node you're dragging from, that one is going to be placed in the foreground. Now we have this red circle above the green background and we have the text above the red circle. I can now hold the shift key and drag the blur from the text and place it on the red circle. So I can now turn up, blurring the red circle and keeping the text sharp. Clicking on the merge nodes, you will get a few options on the properties. This is where you'll find stuff like the opacity, which is blend in Fusion. You have the blending modes like multiply, darken, lighten, overlay, soft light. 
They're called apply modes in Fusion. You can also use a merge node to transform whatever is plugged into the foreground. You might also be wondering what this media out node is. The Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve uses the media out to send things back to the edit page. So whatever is plugged into this media out will be what's displayed on the edit page. If we go back to edit, then we can see we have our composition showing up here. I'm gonna click the merge here and hit add another text node. And this time I'm gonna type text. Ooh, let's make this larger. I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom here. This time around, I'm gonna be dragging the output from merge one into media out. Now everything up to merge one is being sent to the media out. But over here, what we have on merge three with text two, that is not being sent. So if we go back to the edit page, we're only seeing what's sent to the media out. This is why nodes are cool and flexible. Quickly, I'll talk about flow direction. By default, Fusion likes to build from left to right. We have our background, our red circle, our first text, second text, and our output. Like I said before, it's all about inputs and outputs. I can drag this over here. I can place this down here. It wouldn't change how the image looks. Let's undo. Personally, I like to build from top to bottom instead of left to right. So for the remainder of this video and my other tutorials, you're going to be seeing me building from top to bottom. Let's delete everything here and work on a quick composition. I have two images of the Mushroom Kingdom and the star from Mario. I'm going to drag these into the Fusion window and automatically Fusion will create a merge node merging the two. For media in one, we have the Mushroom Kingdom. Let's name it background and media in two, hit F2 and we'll name it star. Like I said before, I'm going to be building from top to bottom. So I'm going to be placing them like this. The nodes you see on the toolbar aren't the only nodes that you have access to. If you right click an empty space and go to add tool, you'll see a bunch of categories that you can choose from to add different nodes. Also, there's a search function by pressing control and space on your keyboard. This allows you to type the name of a node that you might need. For example, let's type blur and hit enter. And now we have a blur node. If you click on a node, hit control space, and then you type something, hit the blur again, it will connect that node to the node that you had selected. So now let's go ahead and blur the background just a bit. We want to make the star a bit smaller. There are many ways to go about this. So I can make the star smaller. Like before, I can change the opacity, I can rotate, I can flip. Up here at the top right, you'll always have this reset icon to reset a node to its default state. So clicking this, it's going to reset it. There's also the transform node. If I click the star right here, control space and hit XF. And here is a transform node. In the parentheses, you'll see two or three letters or numbers that can help you get to these nodes quicker. Let's hit add and now we have a transform node. I'm going to use that transform node to decrease the size of the star. I'm going to move it upwards. Over here in viewer one, I'm also going to turn off the controls. You can do this by hitting Q on the keyboard or from the menu here, you can hit show controls and that turns it off. This just gives me something that's a bit more clean to look at. Over here on the left, I'm going to hit control G as well to turn on the guides. Over here on the left, I'm going to hit control G as well to turn on the guides. Let's delete this blur node. I'm going to click the merge and click the text node to automatically add a text node in. So we'll just down here. So I'm going to type power star. Again, we can't see anything because we're viewing merge one. I'm going to increase the size. I'm going to change the font. Let's bring this down here. Here in the inspector, we have more properties for these nodes. Clicking on shading gives us a few options like the layer styles or blending options in Adobe applications. We can, for example, add an outline or we can add a drop shadow. These will be explained in future videos. For now, let's add a drop shadow using a node. Click our text, control space, search for shadow, and I'm going to add a drop shadow. Let's bring the distance down. Let's bring the blur down a bit. So we're going to turn down the strength. Here we go. Here we have a very basic composition. I can now plug this into my media out. And we have this for our edit page. This is still a static image though. Let's quickly dive into some animations. Let's animate our star. Here at frame 12, I'm gonna click the transform mode. These little diamond icons over here on the right, these allow us to set keyframes. 
I'm gonna hit a keyframe for the size and also the center which is the placement let's go back to frame 0 and I'm gonna drag the star down and also I'm gonna decrease the size now if we hit space on our player animation we'll see the star it scales up this is a very linear animation let's grab the text move it over and we're gonna add a transform node so XF for the transform node on the star at frame 18 we're gonna add a keyframe to the center we're gonna go back and then we're gonna slide this off to the left and now we have this animation let's go on the blur node we're gonna turn the blur all the way down let's say we want it to not be blurry until around frame 12 we're gonna hit the diamond and we go up to the frame 20 we kind of blur the background like that now we have an animation that looks like this not very exciting this is where splines come in let's click the spline editor right here and this mess of lines that you see right here this is our editor we can control a to select everything and hit control f to frame everything we can use this to change how the animation flows to clean things up a bit, I'm going to click the three dot menu right here. I'm going to click show only selected. That way only the tool that I have selected will be showing in the graph editor. If I control select multiple things, then they'll show up here. Let's have a look at the star animation. I'm going to place this on viewer one so we only see the star. The way the graph editor works is from top to bottom is the value and from left to right is the time. You can see over time it goes from a value of zero to a value of 1 for the movement and a value of 0 to a value of around 3.5 for the size. Now let's turn off the size for the moment. We're gonna select Control F and frame just the movement. Hitting S on the keyboard will smooth the animation so it stays at a value of 0 for a bit longer and it slowly starts picking up speed then it slows down like things would in real life. Now that's a little bit more pleasing. If you hit T on the keyboard, you'll get these options to control the easing in and out in Fusion. I can select both of them again, and I can ease it in and ease it out some more, which will kind of exaggerate the animation. Let's play it again. Now, that is what we have. Let's click this right here so we can make it a reference, and we're gonna turn on the size. Let's do the same thing. Let's hit Control F to frame it. We're going to hit S and now we're going to ease it. Let's review. Now the animation is looking a whole lot better. Let's do the same for the text. Clicking the transform, I'm going to hit 1, place this in the viewer 1. The text is linear just like the star was. Select everything, we're going to hit S, see what that looks like. Now that looks a bit better. Let's exaggerate it. Let's drag this all the way to 100, all the way to 100. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. At the bottom of the spline window, you have options like the selection box right here that you can use to retime and change the animation. Options to flip the keys so we can have the text go out instead of come in. You can play around with these to see some of the cool stuff that you can do. Now you might be wondering, how do I move these keyframes around? And that's our next step. The blur comes in just a bit late. I would like it to come in a bit earlier. And this is where the keyframes panel comes in. Let's turn off spline, turn on keyframes. We're gonna hit Control F to frame everything. At first, this can be a mess because it shows all of the nodes that are in the tree. Like before, we can come here, and we can have it to select it only. So it only shows what we have selected. Or we can click this icon right here and check animated. Now it only shows nodes that have animation. Let's click this right here and uncheck show only selected so we can see all of our nodes with animation. Hit the drop down and here it shows our keyframes. This is our blur right here. We can click and drag to select the nodes. Now we can move it to where we want. See, we want it to start getting blurry like right as the text is coming in. So let's drag this over here now maybe even a bit earlier like that there we go now let's add a glow effect to the text 
drag this up, hit control space, type glow, hit enter. And now I want the text to be glowing as it comes in. When it stops, I want the glow to stop. So I'm going to have it glow about that much. And right here, I can add a keyframe. And right here, when it stops, I want the glow to slowly fade out. That's a bit too fast. So move this over on the keyframes. Okay, now let's change the color of the star. So on the text node, I want it to start transitioning to yellow at this point. So I'm going to hit keyframe. Now here, I'm going to get the color picker. I'm just going to drag it over and select the star color. I think I like it better if it was yellow as it comes in and then turns white. Like before, let's open the spline editor and we see we have the text already selected. Select everything. Hit and hit the reverse icon down here. Now it comes in yellow and turns white. Now to wrap things up, if your computer is struggling to preview animations as it will when you're working on very complex things, you have an option in Fusion that's kind of like RAM preview in After Effects. You can select a region by holding control and dragging on the timeline to define a region that you want to preview. If you want to reset to the entire timeline, just hold control and double click. We know our keyframes stop at about 54, so let's preview 54. You can select any node to preview. I'm just going to right click media out since it's the final node. In here, create play preview and let's put it on the right view. You can select full size, half size, a third, a quarter. So let's hit start. And then, once it renders, you can right click over here and hit play. You can hit loop if you want to loop it. You can play the animation over and over again in a RAM preview fashion. To stop it, you can select the node and just place it back on viewer 2 and it goes away. One thing I forgot to mention is motion blur. You can turn it on for the entire thing or you can turn it on for specific nodes. If I want the text to have motion blur, for example, I can select the transform node for the text and over here under settings, I can select motion blur. I can turn the quality up so it has more steps and I can set my shutter angle. 180 is fine. If we play it back, lags for a bit by the caches. There we go. If you want to add motion blur to everything without going through and adding it to the transform or the merge nodes. If you want to add motion blur to everything without going through and adding it to all the transform or all the merge nodes, here's one trick that you can use. Let's add a background node. What I'm going to do is merge everything over this background node right here. We have everything that we just worked on up here merged over this node. Let's disconnect the media out and connect it down here. Everything that we just worked on will be above this black background. On this merge node, let's go to settings, let's turn on motion blur, let's drag the quality up. And now if we scrub through, everything has motion blur, including our star and the text. Let's quickly copy our keyframes to loop the animation and we're gonna end the tutorial there. Let's open up the keyframes panel, drag this over. We're going to select everything here. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to drag it over. And now we have duplicated our animations. Let's open up spline, drag this over. We're going to select everything. And now let's, let's check all the boxes so we can see all our animations. Control A, hit F, frame everything. We know that everything over here is just copied. Let's select everything and hit reverse. And now we have a looped animation. Let's go out to our edit page. Let's go to playback, set render cache to smart. And up here, let's click this three dot menu and hit show all video frames. Let's hit play, let it cache, cut it right here. Let's delete that part. And now you have your first looping fusion animation. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you would like to see in the next video.